Rankin's theory. But Rankin's theory is very popular. So many times we civil engineers like Rankin's theory. The reason is very simple because of its simplicity, because of simplicity, simplicity in the sense easiness in calculation of lateral earth pressure. Lateral earth pressure means you know active earth pressure, passive earth pressure. So you know different types of lateral earth pressure, active earth pressure, passive earth pressure, earth pressure at rest. So while you are calculating, while you are calculating lateral earth pressure, while you are calculating lateral earth pressure, we use it to use Rankine's theory and Coulomb's theory. But many times we, we, we are happy with Rankine's theory. We are trying to understand why Rankine's theory is popular. So you know the assumptions in Rankine's theory. Soil is homogeneous. Soil is isotropic. As you soil is semi-infinite. And uh, many times we used to say ground surface is horizontal. Ground surface is horizontal. And very important point you should keep in our mind regarding Rankine's theory. Back of the wall is back of the wall is smooth and vertical. Back of the wall is smooth and vertical. So here you see uh, the angle made by the back of the wall with the horizontal is 90 degrees. Alpha is 90. Alpha is 90. And one more point, if you see, uh, if you are trying to find the difference between Rankine and Coulomb, see in Rankine's theory, Rankine's theory you can apply for inclined backfill also. You can apply, this is data, uh, surcharge angle, uh, surcharge angle. So Rankine's theory can be used for uh, ground surface is horizontal, but anyhow, uh, it was extended to uh, inclined backfill also further by using conjugate stresses, by using concept of conjugate stresses. So now uh, what I would like to tell you, so in Coulomb's theory, it can be used even for inclined backfill and also wall may not be vertical. Uh, see wall is inclined here with an angle alpha. So now uh, so what I'm trying to say, so Rankine's theory is simple. So that I would like to write here. Rankine's theory. Coulomb's theory. So both the theories are meant for calculation of the lateral earth pressure. Coming to, here you see the basic difference we have highlighted. The basic difference, once again, I will tell you in Rankine's theory, back of the wall is smooth and vertical. Whereas in Coulomb's theory, it may not be smooth. It may not be smooth in the sense you consider the wall friction. That means the friction between the back of the wall and backfill. Back of the wall and backfill. That is, uh, we are designating with the angle of wall friction, delta, delta. Now, let me tell you, uh, this is the second point I would like to tell you. If you see in Rankine's theory, many times we are considering a retaining wall. This is the ground surface. So one can see now in Rankine's theory, so back of the wall is smooth and vertical. You know that. So the thing is, here you see, when you are calculating active force, so you know that it is acting at a height h by 3. So let me tell you, this active force, the resultant force is parallel to ground surface. So that I would like to write, resultant Resultant, resultant, uh, what I want to know, resultant thrust is thrust, if you are not happy with thrust force, is parallel to, parallel to ground surface. Whereas if you see Coulomb's theory, I will explain you now, I got chance to explain what is Coulomb's theory. Here I see, uh, I am telling you once again. The wall may not be back, may not, back of the wall may not be vertical. Here you can see now. So this is the England backfill surface. So one can see now, uh, this is Coulomb's theory, what I am saying now. Coulomb's theory. 
So now you see here, uh, this is the alpha, this is beta, such as angle. Now you see, if you see resultant here, resultant, you see this is the back of the wall, which is inclined at an angle alpha with horizontal. So now you can write it as theta. So and just for understanding, or so else you can write here many things we can write but uh, basic mathematics is that only so here you can see now uh, this is such as angle now this is the normal to back so here you see uh, this is back of the wall now this is perpendicular to back of the wall this line is so now your resultant makes an angle a the angle made by the resultant the angle made by resultant with uh, normal to the back of the wall is delta so now can you can ask me what is delta angle of angle of wall friction so the friction you as you know uh, you may ask sir you please tell me sir you please tell me so you are trying to say the difference. So how you, how you are trying to say? Here you see, I am considering delta. What is delta? Wall friction. If delta is zero, what will happen? Can anyone tell me? If delta is zero, what will happen now? See, there is no surprise. Your active force is perpendicular to back of the wall. It is true for Rankine's theory. Whereas in Coulomb's theory, I have considered the wall friction. I have considered the friction between the back of the wall and I am not, I'm not trying to say it is vertical, now it is inclined. Okay, so what I am trying to say, so there is a wall friction that I have to show now. So now delta is the angle of wall friction which exists, which exists between resultant active force and normal to the wall. Whereas in Rankine's theory you can ask me delta is how much now? Delta is how much? Zero degrees. So now you can see the active force is absolutely perpendicular to back of the wall. Active force is absolutely perpendicular to back of the wall. Because of considering wall friction, because of assuming back of the wall is rough. So the wall friction we should consider. That's why you can see this delta. Delta, I will write in English. Delta, the this delta is the wall friction that makes that makes that exists between resultant active force and and uh, the angle between the resultant active force and normal to the normal to the back of the wall. Normal to the back of the wall means this is back of the wall. This is normal to the back of the wall. So delta. That's why that's why don't expect active forces active force resultant active forces resultant active forces not parallel to ground surface this i would like to highlight not parallel to ground surface the basic difference i would like to once again highlight regarding rankine theory and coulomb theory you know in rankine's theory in rankine's theory we we consider uh, back of the wall is smooth and vertical smooth and vertical so now i think uh, my picture is very clear uh, smooth and vertical that means uh, whenever you are writing smooth means delta is zero so now your active force is absolutely perpendicular to the absolutely perpendicular to the back of the wall but you cannot see this type of picture in coulomb theory the reason is very simple coulomb i will write clearly coulomb theory Coulomb is a, one of the investigators who developed these classical earth pressure theories. Classical earth pressure theories. So now uh, we are trying to discuss about Rankine's theory and Coulomb's theory. So once you consider wall friction, the theory becomes complex. The theory becomes complex. That is why uh, that is why we are trying to make a statement like this. So Lackville is poisonless. 
especially in C0 condition, the rank and steel is applicable for cantilever retaining wall. I will explain you during our discussions in retaining walls. I will try to explain you what is cantilever retaining wall. I will explain how Coulomb's theory is applicable for uh, you know solid gravity retaining wall. Gravity retaining wall uh, because they are very bulk. 